Welcome into the Big Fight Breakdown here on Pro Box TV, part of our long form boxing news. That's right, Big Fight Breakdown, our ranking show. Get them all, Pro Box TV. Download the app now. Never fall behind in your boxing news. Well, the big news for us, of course, our Big Fight Breakdown, August 21st. That's right, it is Jared Hurd taking on Jason Rosario, our own Polly Malinaji. Chris Algieri caught up with Jared Hurd in Tampa, and he loves his Pro Box. Oh, yes, definitely. I'll be keeping up with a few of the fights. Um, you know, uh, some of the up-and-coming guys have fought in you guys' card, and I tuned in because, uh, you know, I'm very familiar with some of the guys. One of my friends, Emmanuel Savoy, he uh, has a, a couple fighters that he fought on Pro Box before I tuned in with him. And also the Lamont Roche fight, man. That was a great turnout. I was actually there. And, uh, you know, yeah, I've been, I've been keeping up with you guys. Hey, Jared, what's up, man? Paulie Malinaji, how you doing, man? Paulie, what's good? What's up, man? How's it going? Listen, uh, what's the, what was the motivation? You just got, did you uh, miss boxing? Uh, obviously, anybody that, you know, decides to make a ring return obviously misses it to a degree, but is there a specific motivation besides missing the competitive aspect of it? Is there a certain something that's, that's maybe giving you an extra drive was it getting married and then you know things are more uh more uh, uh organizing your in your life now and you wanted to give this another shot what in particular is giving you this uh motivation to get back in yeah man that wedding uh tap my pockets a little bit now i'm playing <laughs> but uh uh what it <laughs> they is they typically man, do uh, <laughs> yeah man what it is is that you know uh to be honest with you i took a long layoff after the death of my father and uh you know, it was a two years, I two, maybe a year and a half I took off. And, you know, I never wanted to retire at that time. I just wanted to take some time off the grief and, uh, you know, getting back into that shape because when I was out at the time, I was very inactive. I didn't do anything. You know, I, I was sitting around um, with family. It was, you know, I felt like at that time when I lost my father that, I wanted to spend time with my family more because it made me realize how short life was. And I wasn't doing any training. I was just around them guys. So when I came back to the sport, it actually took me a long time to get back in shape too, man. I got up so high in weight. And uh, that's really what it was for the long layoff, man. But uh, other than that, once I had my fight uh, back in December 2023, I've been trying to be as active as I can. It's just that, you know, it's pretty tough now to get these fights um, being on our end. Yeah, champ. Uh, you, you brought up something, uh, the weight, which you know always made me thought. I mean, you're you're the biggest 154 pounder I think I've ever seen compete. I mean, you you look bigger than an, than most middleweights fighting at 54. Um, maybe speak to a little bit about the weight, where you're at now, uh, how comfortable you feel, and what the difference is, you know, between fighting at 54 and and, and where you're looking to campaign next. Uh, wait, I'm I'm looking to stay at 154 unless I get a a call that brings me back. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm looking to stay at 160. Unless I get a call that brings you back down to 154, that uh, you know, it's worth losing the weight. But to be honest with you, man, I love it at 160. I feel great. I feel like I fit in at the weight class pretty good. Um, you know, the best thing I did was open up my own gym uh, because you know when I was training here at home is where I had my most success, and I started training out Houston when I was with uh, Coach K Karoma. Um, uh, and traveling and training was it really my thing man because i'm the type of guy that i'm not gonna say i need someone to push me because you know you definitely gotta have your own motivation for the sport but um i do get kind of you know just going through the motion when i'm not really inside a camp or in the gym with my trainers and stuff like that if i'm training my own it's kind of just going through the motion and you know that's what it was every three or four months i'll go out to camp but then i'll come at home for another month to have two months and i'm really not that active but now that I open my own gym, I'm in the gym 24-7, man. And uh, that's really what all, all it was. I needed to be in the gym more and taking no days off. As far as the timing is concerned, you know, I think there's a, a, a spot for a big name like yourself, you know, to sort of come in and fill that vacuum. So as far as the timing, it's, it's, it's really, really perfect that you not only are returning at this moment when the 160-pound division has this void, but also the fact that you are at 160 pounds. You know, uh, what's your feeling on the weight class right now and the division right now? And, and how, how fast do you see yourself moving into the title picture in, in a weight class that, you know, for lack of a better 
uh, better words, has this sort of vacuum at the top of it. All right. Uh, to be honest, I, I agree with you. Um, when you say the weakest division, and by far, I mean not the opposition. Of course, they're 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 great champions, they're great fighters. But as far as like the, I guess say where all the excitement is at, 160 doesn't have a lot of excitement, doesn't have a lot of big champions that's in the mix of, of everyone else, you know. And uh, like you said, it is a a big opportunity for someone like myself to fill that fill that uh, position and become world champion and make a name up there where a lot of other fighters can come face me. And, uh, you know, um, you know, it's just an opportunity. Like a fight, over, a win over Jason Rosario will get me into that position, you know, and maybe fight for the titles. And, uh, you know, who knows? If you may see a law or her too, or, you know, so it, it all depends. Champ, I'm as I'm sure you're aware on ProBox TV, I mean, uh, for one, it, it, it's a great platform for, for fighters to get their opportunity to, to get out there. Um, but also, we, we, we put on tough fights. And you're one of the highest level guys that we've had on our air, but you're also fighting another former world champion in Jason Rosario, you just mentioned him. Uh, maybe just speak to, to the matchup and what you're looking to do in the ring, maybe show some different wrinkles or whatever you have in mind. Yeah, man, you know, uh, to be honest with you, my main thing at this point in my career with not just this fight, with any fight, of course, we want to talk about getting to Jay Fazario, but I just want to go into more fights, not getting hit as much. You know, I'm 34 now, and, uh, you know, I got to think about the sport after after I uh, finish. And, um, you know, it's just, just to go in there, get the win, but don't get it with taking a lot of shots. And uh, Jason Rosario, um, you know, I, like I said, I had the longer arms, and uh, I just want to work on using my range and 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 getting the job done without taking too much damage. Would you say, in order to not take too much damage, because Rosario can be an active guy when he's on. You remember the stoppage of Julian Williams where he kind of trapped him and sort of throwing all those punches. He's an active guy when he's on. Would you say the uh, the plan is to get to the body, having, having seen that he's shown some susceptibility there? Oh, most definitely, man. Uh, anybody who faced Rosario sees that he, he's he's very vulnerable to the body, man. You know, that's that's any fighter that he's probably faced and took a loss to. They had something to do with a body shot. So, um, you know, that's definitely the game plan. Uh, but, you know, as I said, too, that fighters realize their, their weaknesses and what, what they're not as good at, and they – they try to capitalize and pick up on it. So I'm expecting, too, that he's done things to, you know, strengthen his core or deflect punch that's coming towards his body. So the body is definitely in in in, in the mind when going to the fight. But, you know, if, if, if the head, if the body don't fall, you know, you got to do other things. Jim, one more thing, man, before we let you go. Uh, I asked you about the 160-pound division, and you, and you sort of were respectful to the whole division, but then you did give me a little hint. You mentioned Lara, the WBA champion, and that was one of the best fights that I worked uh, in all my when I was over at Showtime, probably one of the top three or four fights uh, that I worked in all those years there. Um, there's certainly a history between you two. You guys both uh, uh, were great elite-level championship fighters at 154 pounds, just like Jason Rosario was a, a, a good fighter at 154 pounds. So is that what you're looking for? Is it, or it, it, not to overlook Rosario, but if Lara gets by Danny Garcia and you can get by Jason Rosario, are you going to be, is that, is that the, the guy you're looking for? Uh, definitely, man. We would love to fight Lara, but to be honest with you, I would like to face Lara, but I also want to fight Carlos Adamas. You know, uh, he's a great fighter too, but he just wants real cliche. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw a lot of tweets in his, his games too, so... Uh, like I said, man, you know, I, I kind of been off the radar, but please, please understand that I, I have been working on a lot and I can't wait to display it on you guys. This platform, I appreciate you guys, ProBoss TV. And, uh, yeah, it's it's just time for, for Swift to come back, man. Looking forward to his comeback. Also, the man who got to sit down with her. That's right, Chris Algieri, Polly Malinaj, and also Showtime, Sean Porter, joining us via Zoom. Chris, let me start with you. You've had the ups and downs in your career. All of you have. How hard is it to accomplish what Hurd is talking about, which is a second win in his career? Well, a lot of it comes down to hunger. You know, he sounds like he's hungry. He sounds like he's in a good place mentally. Um, I know some of my ups and downs, I wasn't in a great place when I was off. 
So getting back was um, was a little different, but he seems to be in a good place. You know, he mentioned his uh, his personal life, getting married. Uh, unfortunately, his father passed, but now he's got a gym and he's he's, he's really focused on on the training and staying in shape year round. Um, obviously, he seems like he's he's mentally uh, ready to come back, and that's a big thing. Just be, just coming back on your own terms is really important. And that's one of the things that Pro Box TV is so great for. You've got these guys like an Angelo Leo who spends two years out of the ring, you know, because of negotiation problems with with promoters and managers and whatnot. Comes back, fights three fights on our air. Next thing you know, he's a world champion. You know, so Jared Hurd is that type of fighter as well. You know, former former world champion himself. You know, has had some time out out of the spotlight, especially at the highest level. Has some time out, but he's ready to come back. He's hungry. If he brings that hunger to the gym and brings that hunger on Fight Night on Pro Box TV, you know, the sky is the limit. I mean, uh, just like that interview we were talking about, you know, the 160 pound division, and and it can be wide open for a guy like Jared Hurd to step in and do some damage. Another thing about Pro Box TV, you don't get a lot of softball fights. Jason Rosario, very, very live and difficult competitor. What do you mean that level of competition, Paulie? Is that right for his first fight back, as you said, after a layoff? Yeah, you know, you, you try to match it up with also name recognition, right? If you're going to have a Jared Hurd, you need somebody to adequate to match up against him. And you know what? What better than an ex-world champion, ex-unified world champion, Jason Rosario, who had shown also in his own dangerous moments that he can be a, a guy who can be a threat to anybody at the top. You know, he, I, know, I know he came out of nowhere a little bit when he knocked out Julian Williams and became champion. And then he's just as fast as he came in, he, he, he was eliminated uh, by Charlo in a less than stellar performance by Rosario. But, you know, you do see in the moments when he when he beat up uh, uh, Williams, it was interesting because it was a guy I had seen in a South Florida gym that I could see that this guy could fight. I wasn't sure if anybody else would notice him. And then all of a sudden I see him in a world title fight and he's up against Williams. And I'm like, OK, but I know Williams can also fight. So, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. And then this guy mm -hmm. ends up knocking out Williams. So, you know, he when he's on, he, he himself is, is dangerous as well. So Hurt is Hurt needed this kind of opponent as well. You know, with Hurt is a guy who's been one of the bigger names in the, in the past generation. And, OK, he fell below the radar. Going back on what, what the champ Chris Algieri said, you know, his mind is in the right place. But it's also sometimes it's funny. Your mind can be in the right place to fight. And also your mind can be in the wrong place where fighting is all is really the 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 balancer, so to speak. It's, it's the, it balances the scale because you're, you're in an abnormal situation and you need to fight sort of nor normalize your own life and normalize your own psychology. Right. But it seems like Hurt is the kind of guy who needs everything calm around him. You know, he needs a storm to, to sort of pass and then he can focus on boxing. And it seems like that's what he's done here or going into this fight. You know, he's seems like his head is at peace and, 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 and his mind is in the right place. He just got married. So he seems like everything's a little calmer in his life than maybe it might have been. Uh, he told us that he was been working on some things. So even if there's been a long layoff, it's po quite possible in his own gym that he's been, you know, just training the entire time and then trying to work on these flaws and trying to, better his game and and so on and so forth one thing you don't realize until it's fight night though you you say you're hungry you know you say all these things when you're a little older but you actually don't realize how hungry you are or how not hungry you are until fight night when when suddenly it's in front of you and you're in a tough situation and maybe you're not reacting like you used to before but you know the thing about this fight is both these guys are in that situation so we're going to find out if any either of them have the hunger because if either of them still has the hunger i mean these guys again are ex-world champions i mean we're, we're going to probably see the winner of this fight i wouldn't be shocked to see the winner of this fight in a world title fight because the 160 pound division isn't that deep um it, it's got some good champions like like heard said but it's not that deep uh, you already have a built-in uh, storyline in case Hurd wins with a rematch with Lara, which is one of the most amazing fights you'll watch. You know, he told us he wanted to fight Adamus, so he wants to smoke. Um, if Rosario wins, you imagine Adamus and Rosario, I think they'd be, both be Dominicans, right? You'd have a, oh, yeah. a world title fight between two Dominican uh, fighters. That would be pretty interesting as well in, in terms of, you know, fanfare there. So, you know, you, you have something here that, that could build into – Build up pretty quickly, I'd say. You know, like a lot of times, Pro Box TV fighters, they got to, you know, build up this resume here on our network to get picked for one of these bigger fights, and, and they're battle-tested always. And this fight is going to be no different. These guys are going to come back and be battle-tested against one another. But because they already have that big-name reputation, or at least ex-world champion on their resume, you could probably see the winner jumping right into the middleweight title picture. Yeah, Showtime, when you look at this X's and O's wise, certain styles age well, meaning you don't require a ton of speed, you don't require a ton of time, your style's not that cute, you can get in there, you have good fundamentals, you can kind of start where you left off. Style wise, does Jared Hurd have the kind of style where you can take time off and come back and still be solid? That's a that's a fantastic question. Um, kind of looking at him like I look at myself. Uh, I had the um, God-given 
talents and gifts, the speed, the power, the quickness. Didn't really have to work on that. Had to work on the 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 conditioning. I had to work on the accuracy. You know what I mean? I had to work on um a few of the qualities needed for my kind of style. And 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 Jared has always had that kind of that come right at you non-stop train kind of style as well. Um, when when you've been out of the ring as long as he has, and the, and I look back at his record, he had a couple of fights in 2022, and I think he had one, if not two, uh, last year as well. So he hasn't been completely inactive for two years. But when you've been on this this layoff, the best thing about it is he's got a gym that he can go into without anybody waiting waiting for anybody to open it up. There's no gym hour. He sets his own gym hours. So like he said, he's been working. If he's truly been working then I wouldn't worry too much about his his style in this fight. However, if he hasn't been working, his timing is going to be off. Uh, his motor isn't going to be what it used to be. Um, and other things, other qualities like that punch precision that he that he used to have, those things will be off as well. So I definitely have some concerns with him coming to, to the ring with the kind of style that, that I'm used to, uh, I'm accustomed to. However, he also said that he's planning on not getting hit as much. If he's talking about not getting hit as much, I'm sure he's not talking about come, going right into the fire the way that he used to. That was his thing. I come right at you, and I didn't move my head. I come right at you, and I was getting hit, but I was hitting you more, and I was hitting you harder. You know. So if he's talking about um, not getting hit, that means he's been working on the defense. What does that mean? That means he's pulling back on his offense so that he can be responsibly defense, uh, be responsible defensively. So um, all in all. Uh, the thing I feel I know about Jarrett, if he gets hit, that thing is just going to click and he's going to go right back to being who he used to be, which, which in turn, you know, the thing about, uh, pro box TV, I think once upon a time, if pro box was around a long time ago, he would have been the perfect pro box TV kind of fighter. So I'm expecting him to come out and be pro box style and <laughs> go at it and go get it. Uh, Chris, you know, I, I don't want to out everybody here. We're all fighters. Fighters are liars. And we can fill a small encyclopedia with the lies we heard from fighters <laughs> over the years. But, Chris, a big one is I'm a veteran fighter, but I'm working on new stuff. Boy, you wait till you see the new me. It's very hard for a leopard to change their spots. Does he have to, do you think, for this fight, Chris? Yeah, I mean, and, and not necessarily just for this fight, but like what he was saying, he, there's life after boxing. He's got to worry about his health. You know, he, he took a lot of punches when, when he was coming through, just like the champ Sean Porter said. Like, he was a come-forward guy. He was just like... He was Iron Man in there. He would just come forward and 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 blast away, you know, when, when and get hit with shots. And he didn't care because he was so big and strong for the weight class. But as we see, that runs out, and um, you know, and and you have a life to live after the sport. And it seems like Jarrett has that in mind. So doing some 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 critiques and some little you know fine motor skills and working on some certain things in defense can definitely can definitely aid him. Um, I just hope it doesn't take too much away because his style was so offensive minded. Oftentimes his his defense was his offense. So it's one of those one of those th those questions where we're not going to know until fight night. Is this new adaptable Jared Hurd going to be as effective as the old one who used to you know throw tons of punches and, and be there to be hit? Uh, you know we're only, we're only going to have to find. I mean we're only a few weeks away from finding out. But um, he's got a tough guy in front of him too. So um, I think we'll actually find out pretty quick if uh, this new version of Jared Hurd is going to be successful or not. Polly, it can go either way. A million times we've heard, oh, I have a family now. I have something to fight for. The other side of it is I have something to come home to. I don't want to come home beaten up. This idea that I have more outside of the ring, I can have a dramatic effect on a fighter. Do you think it will have a dramatic effect on this fight, positive or negative? Yeah, you can't really say because different guys react in different ways to that, to that uh, statistic. I've noticed in my career as, from guys when they've had that, when they've had that change, if they have that change, if they start having that family on their on their way up the ladder, it does work as a catalyst to motivate them. It does work as something to say, you know what, I I I'm I'm hungry and now I'm 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 more hungry with my family supporting me and 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 so on and so forth, even having children and whatnot. But I noticed when it's guys who have kids later on in their life or getting married later on in their life, and um it's been it's it's a change from what they were before, it tends to have that it tends to have that problematic situation where it's like you know what, it's, it, I want to say problematic, but it tends to soften them up a little bit. It, it, it's like you said, you know, you, it, you have something to come home to, you know, before your life was different, you were just going, you know, you were just, you know, going a hundred miles an hour on a motorcycle with no helmet, so to speak, you know, you didn't care, you know, you were fighting that way, but now you actually 
all of a sudden your life changed. You know, you've bettered your life. You've bettered your life financially. You've settled down. And now you, you know, you, you actually want to go back to that life when before maybe you didn't have as much care for it, you know? So I don't know which side of herd is going to come out, honestly. But the side, if I go by what I've seen in the past from guys like guys in this situation, they're not as hungry. They're not as uh, as reckless. And herd is telling us himself he's not going to be as reckless. Can a not so reckless herd be as effective though? Can he actually change his spots to the point where he's defensively responsible yet still as successful as he was when he was that <laughs> reckless and that energetic? You know that you know these are things that you're gonna ask yourself going into the fight, and maybe even Jared's asking himself in you know inside his own head, uh, or, or like you said, maybe he has to lie to himself for for that case, and then on fight night you find out. But you know it, it, these are questions that you know are gonna typically come up in this in this situation. Look, fans, uh, download ProBox TV, the app. It is the best way to watch the fights next Wednesday, August 21st. Showtime, the fans watching on the app, when will they know what kind of fight this is going to be? Do you expect maybe in the first three rounds, these are veteran guys, might be a little feel out, but they know what they're doing. What round do you think will know what kind of fight we have? You know, it, it's going to go one or two ways, and I think we'll, we'll know within the first round, if if not second at the at, 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 at the most. Um, both these guys are known as being punchers, hitters, uh, go-getters in the ring, offensive-minded, both of these guys. If both of these guys have matured and they're more conscious now of being uh, not getting hit and being defensively aware and things like that, we may see what we look at as hesitancy. It may be actually them trying to be smart and pick their punches, and it could go slow. I don't see, if I, I don't see the fight going that way. I think both guys are going to come out being who they've always been, um, you know, and and to your point of the question you asked, you know, about about fighters telling a lot of lies. Yeah, I, I, I as much as we want to work on things and try to adapt our styles and, and things of that, of that nature, a lot of times when that blood gets boiling. We just say F it and we go back to being who we were because we know that that's always gotten the job done. It's going to get the job done now. I think we'll know in about a, a, a in about a round. Uh, if these guys come out and they're not throwing the punches the way that we used to, we're used to seeing them throw them, chalk it up. This is going to be a boring one. I expect both of them to come out firing and uh, firing until somebody gets gets put down and, and doesn't get up. I, I think it's going to be a firefight from the big, from the front from round one. You heard the champ. It's going to be an exciting one, August 21st. That's right, Pro Box TV. Get the app now in order to watch. That's right, you'll enjoy it. And if you enjoyed today's show, check it out on audio form wherever you get your podcast. This has been Big Fight Breakdown. We'll see you next time. Wednesday Night Fights. Dynamite action on Wednesday Night Fights every other Wednesday on your boxing channel. Coming up on your next Wednesday Night Fights, August 21st. Former Unified World Champion Swift Jarrett Hurd takes on former Unified World Champion Jason Banana Rosario. Live from the ProBox Event Center in Plant City. Get your tickets at ProBoxTV.com or take your chances at the door. Wednesday Night Fights. For more ProBox TV, scan the QR code on the screen or go to the App Store and Google Play. ProBox TV, your boxing channel.